Welcome to the Language Games Podcast. My name is John Kaus. Today is part 11 of our Van Til's Apologetic series. Last week, we demonstrated that Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. Today, we're going to complete the proof and show that Christianity is true. So theorem four is Christianity is the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. We then bring in axiom seven, which is the assumption that there is a person who has knowledge. Now, why do we have to accept this axiom? Well, if we were to deny it, then we have undermined all language games. Since a bedrock assumption in any language game is that the, ag the agents communicating in the game have knowledge. What is the point of a language game? To acquire and communicate knowledge. Language games have life in their use. But if no one has knowledge, then the games have no use and hence no life. All language would be destroyed. And along with it, the denial of Axiom 7. So the falsehood of Axiom 7 leads to absurdity. And Van Til was fine with having assumptions like this. He says, as Christians, we cannot begin speculating about knowledge by itself. We cannot ask how we know without at the same time asking what we know. All right, now someone may say, hey, but why is, why is Van Til or why are Van Tilians allowed to make assumptions, but he doesn't let unbelievers make assumptions? Isn't Van Til being inconsistent here? And to this, I would say, no, it's just a misunderstanding of Van Til's critique and Bonson's uh, critique of the unbeliever. There's nothing wrong with the unbeliever making assumptions. He can make all sorts of assumptions, but the only assumptions that he can make that are going to stand up are the assumptions that are uh, consistent with God's view of the world, okay, the truth that God has given us. And so unbeliever can make plenty of assumptions, but they're God's assumptions. They're not his. And so when the unbeliever wants to say that there is a person with knowledge, that's fine. He can assume that, but that only makes sense in a Christian interpretation of the world. That does not make sense in a materialistic interpretation of the world. And so the only way to, for the unbeliever to uh, hang on to his assumptions is to do it in the Christian interpretation of the world, not in his interpretation of the world. So there's nothing wrong with letting the unbeliever make assumptions. We just press the point that this only makes sense in a Christian interpretation of the world. All right, so then from this, then of course, the conclusion follows that Christianity is true. If Christianity is the only home for knowledge and there is knowledge, then Christianity is true. All right, what does it mean to be, if I say something is true, it's in, accord, in accordance with reality. All right, so the, the proof then is axiom seven, theorem four leads to theorem five. And we're done. We have completed Van Til's proof. So going back through the list then that we started with, we have to, our proof laid out plainly needs to be, needs to check all, all these boxes, these five boxes. Okay, so does it, did it start with the Bible? Yes, we started with scripture. We started with what the Bible plainly teaches. And this was mostly to give the, uh, to show that Christianity is sufficient, you know, a sufficient foundation for knowledge. And then we, we, we went into showing how then from that, and the fact that you can't refute or you can't show the Bible to show a falsehood, we can also then show that it's the only sufficient foundation for knowledge. Now, these axioms that we started with, are, were they consistent with the Bible? Are they consistent with the Bible? Yes, they are all, all of them are consistent with the Bible. You say, well, is, it, is the argument then sufficient for rational epistemic certainty? And I would argue, yes, it is. So the argument is deductive. It's valid. It's a valid argument. I haven't proven that. I'm going to do that in another series down the, down the line where I'll for, I will turn the argument into formal notation, then I'll prove that each inference is actually valid. Uh, you have to just trust me on that for now. Uh, the definitions that we used are not really disputable. These are all natural uses of these terms that, that we have here. And the other part is, the, the, the other component is, you know, is the denial or the falsehood of any of the assumptions that they lead to absurdity? And I would say yes across the board. So if you deny any of the first three axioms about the Bible's plain teachings, then you undermine the Bible's use of language and you undermine the use of language in general. It leads to absurdity. Uh, axiom four, which would seem to be something that you could say, no, it doesn't lead to absurdity. If, if we deny or if the falsehood of axiom four does not lead to absurdity. No one can demonstrate that the Bible teaches a falsehood. And you say, hey, someone could have a demonstration in the future. But notice, though, if we deny this, 
because you don't have one, okay, and you won't have one. And if you do, come, come find me. We can talk about it, but you won't. You have nothing that will stand up to deny this axiom. So what we have then, what we are left with, is just your emotions, your personal you know, desires, really just arbitrary reasons. And arbitrariness kills reasoning. Okay, it is destroying reason as we typically intend to use it. And so we'd be forced then into a game of postmodern absurdity. Hence the denial or falsehood of this axiom leads to absurdity. You don't believe so? Then, then deny it and give me some kind of argument for that that holds up. Axiom 5, again, the Bible's plain teaching here holds up based on just the use of language of the Bible. Axiom 6, we saw that... Uh, this is, you cannot deny this, this axiom, because if you're going to affirm that there's an example uh, that would undermine the consequence, so Christianity is not the only sufficient foundation for knowledge, you can't do that because you're affirming in the antecedent that no one can demonstrate that an anti-Christian worldview is a, is a sufficient foundation for knowledge. So this implication is true. And then the last one we talked about, axiom 7, this absurdity, or this, the falsehood of axiom 7 leads to an absurdity. All right, and the fourth point, axioms are knowable prior to acknowledging the conclusion. I think if you went through these axioms individually with atheists, they would um, really not be alarmed at granting their truth for the most part. So axioms one through three and five are all about the Bible's plain teachings. And I think most uh, critics of the Bible would say, fine, yes, the Bible teaches that. So what? And then if you look at... Uh, you know, Axiom 7, are they going to grant that someone, that there's at least one person with knowledge? Yes, I think most people would, would grant that. And if, they, and if they don't, then the conversation's over because they're in a, the absurdity game. And we can see that Axiom 6 isn't really, really disputable. So likely the atheist then, who's still going to want to deny Axiom, axiom 4. Uh, but notice though, let's say that we went around in this and he didn't have a demonstration, which he doesn't. He's likely to throw up his arms and say, fine, fine. I can't demonstrate that the Bible teaches a falsehood, but that doesn't mean it's true. And, that, that's, and I've actually had that experience with atheists where they would give such, such a response. But notice, though, my point is, as you go through these, if you go through them individually with atheists, I would bet that most of them would say, yeah, fine. They would grant this, not knowing that when you put them together and you reason logically, it leads to the truth of Christianity and the undermining of their, uh, their very position. All right, and the last point, uh, we may not assume the truth of the conclusion as an axiom. Nowhere in the argument, in the actual argument, am I assuming the truth of Christianity. There is no definition that's used that could only be used by someone who has to accept the truth of Christianity. This is our natural use of language uh, in the games that we're playing in the wild, you might say. And so, no, that we, we're not, we uh, are not assuming the truth of the conclusion as an axiom or in the basis of our definitions. All right, so the argument then is Vantillian, and it's, it's been completed. Now, you may be asking, well, how do you, let's step back, and like, how do we present this to you know, a seven-year-old, and how would you present this to a teenager, and how would you then present this to a college person, right? Now, how do you make it popular? And this, obviously, is, has been tried for, for decades, and there's various level, levels of success on this, and so I'm not saying this is the end-all or be-all what I'm going to present, but it gives you kind of a roadmap of where I would go to do this. And so the first one would be presenting to a seven-year-old. It would be something like this. Christianity is true, because without God's love, we are lost. This captures the argument, and I think it gives enough to a child to, to start with, right? To, to, to begin the argument. So yeah, that makes sense, and they can understand that. Christianity is true because without God's love, we are lost. Then the child grows up and has more questions about this. So then we make it a little, little more meat on it. We say the world is meaningless if Christianity is false. Okay, the world is meaningless if Christianity is false, but the world is not meaningless. So Christianity must be true. So now we're a little deeper in the argument, and yet, you know, a 13-year-old, 14-year-old can understand this. Now, as they get older, they're going to have more and more questions. And you want to get a little deeper on it, so then we add some meat to it. 
We say, knowledge has a home in the Christian interpretation of the world. We cannot show knowledge to have a home in any other interpretation of the world. Maybe you stop here and you give some examples you know, of, of non-Christian worldviews that cannot give an interpretation of the world. And it cannot provide a home for knowledge. Therefore, Christianity is the only home for knowledge. And then since man possesses knowledge, Christianity must be true. And I think this would be about the level of, you know, a 20-year-old, you know, a college, college person. Now, as notice, though, what's requiring us to go deeper is the person asking the questions. So if someone wants to dispute this, that's fine. They have deeper questions than what's presented here, then we go deeper. What's going to happen, though, is eventually we're going to get to the level of precision that's, that's been given in this series, and that's about as deep as you need to go. Okay, the only deeper you need to go would be if you wanted to see the form, the logical form of the argument, because you disputed that it's valid. That's really the only place to go from here, and I'll have that presented in a series going, going forward. But notice, though, what's nice about this is if you can go to the bedrock, if you can go to the very the, the deepest level of the argument, then you don't have to worry that if, if, you, if you're too simplistic with someone and they want to go deeper, that you can't go deeper. Okay, that would be a problem. If, if you can't go deeper, then what are they, what, how should they respond to you? Well, they should be skeptical, right, of, of, of what you're presenting. All right, so we're done. We're done with Van Til's apologetic. We've gone through the proof in its plain form, and we've also given different ways to present it based on the ability of, you know, the, the level of understanding of the person who's receiving the argument. What we're going to do now is we're not done yet because there's some cleanup work that we have to do with Van Til's apologetic that we're going to do in subsequent sessions that will start actually uh, next week. For more content like this, you can find us on x at underscore language games. See you next time.